I am Lucretia Nold with the Kansas Catholic Conference, and I represent the Catholic bishops of Kansas. I wanted to focus today on just my personal experience of teaching adolescents, primarily second graders and seventh graders, for almost 10 years. Kids of this age, their opinions about themselves and the world constantly change. The world views swing widely from one week um, to the next. To give an example, a couple years ago, I was teaching a class, I was singing, and with all sincerity, once I got done singing, one of the second graders looked up at me and goes, you sound exactly like Taylor Swift. I can promise you I sound nothing like Taylor Swift. Um, I think we're just both tall and we cheer for the Chiefs. But it just shows that they are constantly um, making decisions and doing things out of emotions and their worldview is always changing. This bill um, ignores that gender affirming care is life saving care. Uh, it's a big government solution injecting itself uh, into the relationship that should be sacred between parents, children, physicians, and patients. This bill has negative impact on medical providers and compromises their ability to do the job. I want to use the balance of my time though to lift one name, uh, raising the name of next Benedict. A gender non-conforming teen who lived only three hours away from my home in their hometown of Owasso, Oklahoma, who had the very breath of life beaten out of them by students who were motivated by the hatred and intolerance of politicians in their state. Thank you, Madam Chair and the members of the committee. I am Pastor Charles McKenzie. I serve, as was said, at Grace United Methodist Church in Winfield, Kansas. I'm testifying today on my behalf and on behalf of Kansas Interfaith Action. I rise in opposition to HB 2792. The primary concern of Christian community should be to attune itself to Jesus' words when he was asked what the greatest law was. That is, to love God and to love neighbor, telling us that on these two ideals, all other laws and commandments hang. I ask this body to consider uh, those ideals. This is a nightmare scenario for every one of us who loves a trans, non-binary, or gender non-conforming person. I didn't disclose this fully when I began, but I am also the father of a 16-year-old non-binary child. The death of Next did not happen in a vacuum. It happened in a place where bullies have been led to believe that there will be no consequences for violence because people in power have stoked fires of intolerance and venomous behaviors. I just ask you, don't let our state go down this road. There is no compelling reason. There is no overwhelming need to do something like this. It's ill-informed. I invite you, please, please, please oppose HB 2792. Thank you. You for your, uh, for, thank you for this opportunity to provide my testimony today. My name is Kristen Satterwhite, and I am the parent of a 15-year-old transgender boy. My husband and I have been on a journey of researching and understanding for over a decade now. Our child began showing signs of gender dysphoria at the age of three or four, and we started quietly preparing for what we felt may come to fruition down the road. We were also afraid because we lived in Texas and we didn't want him to express his authentic self for fear of the unkindness that he may have received from adults in our community, the same people who are supposed to make a child feel safe. So rather than approaching the subject with him, we waited and we wanted him to organically arrive at his own feelings, feelings about his identity. And he did ultimately come out to us as transgender at the age of 13. We were not surprised we took a breath and we felt proud of him for being more brave than we were. And then after much time, conversation with him, consultation with our trusted team of medical and mental health professionals, we decided to take the step and begin gender affirming care. I'm very concerned that this bill will disrupt the care that we've worked so hard to secure. These are important decisions and these are private decisions and they should only be made by the individuals and their families and the professionals in the field. Part of our relocation to Kansas was our hope for a safer and more welcoming environment here than what we were finding in Texas. But these bills have left us disappointed. I have a kind, funny, driven, responsible teenager at home. And when he graduates from high school, he does not want to go to college in the state of Kansas. He wants to be free to focus on his education without having to worry about all of this. My door is open and if you're ever curious, I would love to share more about our experience with you. And in the meantime, please oppose this bill and let the decision be made by us.